sing in the halls every day. I know, I know. Do you sing in the halls? You can, you can tell when, pe- when Christy's being heard. You just hear a cacophony <laughs> of doors closing. <laughs> hey, that's so mean. Why would you say that? I would open my door. Yeah. I just know some teachers, when they hear us coming down the hallway, they just close their doors. I met a neighbor. Actually, I do that. <laughs> I met a neighbor and she... Um, like our backyard neighbor, when she moved in, she actually got me to sing in the backyard for her because like we share a fence. Yeah. And then she invited me over to her house, although I couldn't stay long because I had to go to another party. Um, but she said she'll invite me back again so I can sing for her friends. She has like meetings. Hmm. That sounds like a gig that you should be paid for. <laughs> At this point, yeah. <laughs> it's just a house party. You know, like the birthday singer or something. Because, like, I one time, they have a fig tree. They chopped it down now, but, like, they had a fig tree. I'm getting off topic. I'll be fast. Um, <laughs> and they were so like, you get figs. You, they're like, do you want some mm-hmm. figs? And I was like, sure. And they gave some to me in a bowl. And then, like, the lady there was like, okay, but now you have to pay me. And I was like, huh? And she was like, I hear you sing all the time. Nothing Can you comes please, for like, free. sing something for me? So I stood. Okay, there we go. Yeah, don't, I, don't move away from the mic. I, okay. I stood on the. Um, the picnic table on our side of the fence, and I sang "Mamma Mia." Oh wow! I could. I'm so surprised. It was the first thing that came to mind. Mama Did you see Mia. Turpin running <laughs> as fast as he can away from? Turpin just felt something in the area. universe. Something <laughs> he, just he's happened. He's like taking a nap. He like wakes up and he's like, "Oh, oh, oh I no!" I heard something in my dreams. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Diane. Hello. How's it going? I'm um, doing pretty well. Nothing's going too wrong today, which is surprising. You were, you were, I watched you were in town last night. Yeah. And you were, you were spectacular. So are you, Christy. Thank you. <laughs> and it must be so fun to do that, but to do it almost every night must be really tiring. Oh my gosh. Very tiring. Like I have no more time to do math homework. We get home around like 10. And then after eating another dinner and getting ready for bed, it's already like 12. And so I have to do my math homework at like 1 and 2 a.m. And then we wake up again until 7. It is a stressful cycle. I guess that's something people don't realize when they go watch a show, right? Because they, they're there for mm-hmm. the two hours that they're there. and But you guys have to go home and you have to do homework. You're, I know. You're not professional um, performers or anything like that. Mm. So you have other stuff that you need to do. Yeah, it's my first time performing too. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> I've oh. been a part of theater for like since grade eight, but uh-huh. only as backstage hand. Um, this is my first time performing uh, like as an actress. This is my biggest role as Tiny Tom. Her Broadway debut. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. I mean, the learning curve wasn't as tricky as I thought it would be, mostly because I already did Delvey announcements before. Uh-huh. And they also did like a bit of assembly speaking. Mm-hmm. So performing in front of a crowd wasn't as scary as I expected it to be. But yeah, learning lines, music was especially hard since that was also my first time singing. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Have you been involved since grade eight? I Yeah, basically. Um, David took me, my older brother, took me to a fine arts night when I was still in Gibson. Um, and at the time, they had this thing like Utopia. I forgot what the title was. Chrissy was there too. I think it was like Utopia or something. All I remember is there were students at desks. and Yeah. I don't remember it much, but this, it was like, good. It was a production um, here? Yeah. 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 It was oh, like okay. a dystopian world with these students. I think it was a play though. It was a play. It was a short yeah. play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, They showed out of fine arts like twice or maybe three times. And I watched all showings that they oh, had. I think I, I think I know what you're talking about. That I think that was a student made play, right? Yeah, it was really, yeah. really good, and I loved it so much. That was like my first time seeing theater in real life, not on like screens like Mamma Mia or like High School Musical. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and it was really, really cool. So I knew I wanted to do that like right away. So every time my brother had another fine arts night, I was like pretty disappointed when they didn't show another play. And I just came for the singing, anyways, though. Mm-hmm. But yeah. <laughs> and so you got gone into drama in grade eight. And mm-hmm. really like I heard the announcements it. and I was like, oh my gosh, they're starting it. Because I was <laughs> waiting for like a, f- like a few days. And I was like, when is it going to start? Did I miss it already? <laughs> and so I ran in. I was like the only grade eight there. I think Cassie and Christy were running late or something. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. For a second you were like, I was the only grade eight. And I was like, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> excuse me. I think, was Han there? 
I don't know. Me and Han met like on the first day of school too. Mm -hmm. So she might have been, maybe I brought her for like support. (laughs) Did you know Christine and Cassie before you came to Delhi? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We met in grade five. So I, so when I came to Canada, we first went into Hellings, I believe. Um, and I would stay there until I was grade four. And then I switched over to grade five in Gibson because my brother was coming to Delview. Um, and so we met in grade, me, I met Cassie first, actually. Uh-huh. Um, and Cassie was doing this presentation about herself in like this little booklet. And it's like, yeah, I have a twin. I was like, she has a twin? And I also am an actress and I do work on the side. And I was like, she has a job? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in grade five. I already feel behind. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, we met each other. We mostly met through Pokemon. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. We do a lot of like Pokemon dealings in the backside of the school. <laughs> Meet me out back after school. Yeah. I heard of like a lot of people ended up getting their Pokemon cards banned since it's gotten like so big back then. Yeah. Yeah. So but why would it be banned? I like it's just all the time in the classroom. I guess it was just must have been such a big distraction. So that's why uh-huh. we had to like sneak behind to the backside of school in the corner. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hiding away from all the monitors. Yeah. <laughs> Naughty kids. <Yes. laughs> Pokemon, come on. Pokemon. It wasn't that bad. I remember having my first Pokemon card and it was like one of those like EXs or the shiny ones. And I was mm-hmm. like, wow, this is such a cool card. And then this kid was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Do you want to trade it for mine? And I was like, okay. And I never saw it again. So for people who don't know, and really for me, um, the EX cards are like the rare ones, right? Yeah, those ones are like holographic. There's like they're rev- super shiny. Yes, they're very shiny and pretty. <laughs> um, they have better skills, though. I don't play Pokemon. I mostly just collect it. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen a few people play it on YouTube, and I still don't really understand it. <laughs> I, I I know how to, not very well because the not types well. are different from the game. But mm-hmm. like I. There's EXs and then there's mega EXs and mm-hmm. it's like there's turns and energies and all that. I know. Um, so I mostly get like big packs before us for Christmas because my parents are like, what should we get her for birthday? Pokemon cards. What should we get her for Christmas? <laughs> Pokemon cards. What if she does well on a test? Pokemon cards. And so I have this huge stack. And then he, my dad would also mostly get them from Telly's. Uh-huh. We got like huge packets full. And I would always show it off to Cassie and then we trade again. <laughs> So wh- where are they now? Um, they're underneath my bed. And I spend like hours trying to like sort them because every time I get a new Pokemon card, I was like, I have no more space. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you, what do you do to sort them? Like what order Mostly do they go in? Mostly just by their energies, like grass types, water types, things like that. Um, and then we ended up going to the dollar store a few times to get like new sheets for Pokemon card holders. Mm-hmm. Um, and it gets really tight and packed. I have about, I don't know, maybe under 2000 close Whoa. though, which because most of the cards I usually get in like bulk sizes anyways. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Mm-hmm. I've, I've, act- I've actually played it before with when my son, son was younger, he used to mm-hmm. collect them and play with kids at school and he'd always come mm-hmm. back with new cards and yeah. stuff like that from trades and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Um, but he would play me, but I never understood the rules partly because I think he made them up. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the fun of the game though, is that you make up, like there's some rules that I was just like, I don't know how to do this. I'll just make it up yeah. as I go. But it was always to his advantage, which was interesting. <laughs> no. Yes. I remember that when one time we got this pack that had like an actual game mat on it, like, coins and chips and so me and my dad actually just tried to play it and I shuffled the deck into a way where it would always be good cards for me every time he picks <laughs> it up and like one of the common right. ones <laughs> right. so I would end up winning every time I still don't I think I played it like once or twice but never really much again so I mean you're notoriously obsessed with Pokemon because you know <laughs> I remember even in grade eight or maybe grade nine when you you would You'd had like a Pokemon or Pikachu hat and all your clothing and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. which I I haven't seen you wear for a while. (laughs) Most (laughs) of my Pokemon stuff was A, hand-me-downs, or B, I just cycled out of it. Um, With the hats, I've been wearing hats for like grade five as well. I could tell which year a photo was taken based on what hat I was wearing at the time. (laughs) 
Um, like I would have Monster High ones. I would have like a Wheel of Fortune one once. I don't know how. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and then I mostly cycled out of them as well. Um, I still have a few hats I wear often in school, mostly just to hide my hair now. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you how do you get into all of this? How did you get into all of this stuff? Like, was mm-hmm. it your siblings or like Honestly, school? I feel like maybe Cassie or my fr- or maybe another childhood friend. I honestly just always knew I lived with it. I can't remember a specific moment where I was introduced to it. Mm-hmm. I just always had it on me. And and then like you go into other types of anime and mm-hmm. manga and <laughs> anime the whole culture. Anime started with um SAO Sword Art Online for my dad. Or maybe it was Studio Ghibli. But I think my first anime was Studio Ghibli, but like anime series wise, it was Sword um Sword Art Online, which has received a bit of I guess controversy nowadays because as a kid I never noticed it but like when you see it as an adult you can notice there's like a lot of fan service that you didn't notice before Mm -hmm. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) I mean the storyline still holds up pretty well I would say I just haven't seen it in a while and then I moved on to like other types of genres like um assassination classroom a very good anime too Mm-hmm. It's about this teacher who has to run this class of kids who are all like um, low grade students who just rebel and bully against other kids. And then he teaches them all to be like good, upstanding kids. It's like a really great underdog story. Mm-hmm. It has a very sad ending, but it's very good. And you, you just watch the anime online. Um, I am one of my only friends who actually pays to watch anime. <laughs> Otherwise, they all take... Um, not so legal sources. <laughs> so you, you're all like Crunchyroll? Mm-hmm. I used to switch between Funimation and Crunchyroll until they like joined together. Okay. But as of now, my dad now tries to save money and waits for all of the episodes to come out. And then he buys <laughs> it so we can binge right. it all in one month. Right. And we wait for another year to do the cycle again. <laughs> Does your dad watch? Oh, yeah. Watch he's too? the one who introduced it to me. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Just the other day, we watched the new Demon Slayer movie, uh-huh. which... I didn't know this. Apparently, it was advertised. I saw the trailer and bought my tickets right away, so I didn't pay too much attention. But it was basically just a recap of Mugen Train again, with one episode to premiere at the new season three. They show the last two episodes of the previous season. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, I mean, it was really good to see it in theaters. I saw Mugen Train in theaters, and I got to see it again. Mm-hmm. Um, Christy doesn't know much about Demon Slayer, but I keep yeah. telling her to get into <laughs> anime. I watched the first episode, Diane, the first episode. <laughs> and you didn't continue? I haven't had time. I know, but you should have. There's know. just so much out there right now. I know. So it's... much, uh, not just anime, but like shows that people talk about. And, you know, I usually get to it pretty late because again time mm-hmm. <laughs> i don't know how people have so much time to to, mm-hmm. to watch everything but um it's it's nice in a way that we have access to a whole bunch of different media and really good stuff right um but also like to invest yourself into a show like sometimes like um attack on titan mm. i don't know when i would like I've watched a few episodes, but how many seasons out are we now? I think there's season four, four and a half. Oh, really? Because they split okay, up the final arc into two seasons. Yeah, yeah. But there are some shows where okay, forget it. I can't. I can't <laughs> no, get there's it. There's a it. yeah. Uh, One Piece. Is oh my like gosh! Way too long. A thousand episodes. It's literally oh, really? a thousand episodes. Okay, I watch. Sarah got me into the first few episodes, and I watched them. They're really good. I really uh-huh. enjoyed it, but. A thousand episodes That's so much terrifies time. me. Right. I have this other friend who also caught up with the entire One Piece, and now he has to wait every single week for another episode. <laughs> <laughs> you need to buy the full time year plan of Crunchyroll to finish off the series. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's, it's interesting how many uh, kids, not just kids, but all sorts of people are into, you know, all the Japanese animation. Mm hmm. I and mean, it's been like that for a while. Yeah, especially during the pandemic where everybody got time to themselves. And they started to like, as a kid, I didn't really meet too many kids who watch anime. Mm-hmm. I think there was this one time during Halloween, somebody dressed up as Naruto. And one of the teachers thought, was like, oh, is that a religious thing on his head? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the headband. Right. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, but like now everyone can recognize, oh, yeah, that's Naruto. Yeah, that's Demon Slayer. Mostly because, again, everybody had time to actually start delving into what anime is. Uh-huh. And so lots of people got into that, like Q, for example, because things on Netflix people can watch easily because everyone has Netflix. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so yeah, like Haikyuu. Um, I watched like Hunter Hunter and like Oran High School Host Club. Mm-hmm. A really good animes as well. Mm-hmm. Haikyuu, which is about volleyball. Yeah, about volleyball. <laughs> It is so intense when you wouldn't expect it. Uh-huh. I don't know. The animation medium of it makes everything so much bigger than you would think it is. I started getting into volleyball at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Just so for got, that. It got you yes. into, you know, doing mm-hmm. a sport. I feel like I'm not the only one who started playing volleyball <laughs> because of it. <laughs> That's funny. Mm-hmm. Um Turns out I'm not as good as the anime. <laughs> <laughs> but in your mind, you yes, are. Yes. <laughs> I was so uh, Feeling the ball, <laughs> <laughs> you seeing see all it the hit lines. offside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, I there was this uh, um, other anime called Skate Infinity. It only has one season out so far, and I'm waiting for the second one to come out. But it's about skating on skateboards. Mm-hmm. It's about a Canadian, so Canadian representation oh, yeah. in he, a Japanese animation. Yeah. What? Yeah. Um, he's a snowboarder, and he comes to Japan, and. He, he realizes uh, that he can't snowboard that much anymore. Uh-huh. He's in. Oh, oh, he's from Canada to yeah. Japan. Oh, okay. yeah, he's from. He's half. Um, I think he's half Japanese. Uh-huh. His dad is Canadian. His mom is Japanese. I could be wrong about that. Um, but since he wants to keep like snowboarding and keep using his, um, he has this friend who teaches him how to skateboard and realizes, dang, this is a lot more difficult than <laughs> snowboarding. So they like tape up his feet to the skateboard, <laughs> like a snowboard. Um. And they do this underground, like, races to do it, too. Mm-hmm. I started learning how to skateboard, and that ended early. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you learned? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. I, I got, like, a $25 skateboard on Amazon. It worked pretty well. Um, Chris, you saw me practicing over the summer. Wait, tw- I went. $25 I went skateboard? Yeah, like 30 ish 30 ish 25 My That's dad tried to cheap. find the cheapest one because he... He probably knew it wasn't going to last long. It's probably not professional grade, but, like, mm-hmm. you know. It did what it needed to do. I had, like, one skating mm-hmm. lesson with you, and then... <laughs> you, you guys learned on your own? Yeah, mm-hmm. we did it over the summer. Somebody had a skateboard. They invited us to the park, and we practiced in, like, this hockey outdoor It's on the rink hockey rink thing. In Delview. Mm-hmm. Delview mm-hmm. Park, yeah. Mm-hmm. I learned how to do it, and I was... Surprisingly, you went better. down the hill. You were pretty yeah, good. I went pretty good. I went down a very, I would say, very steep slope. Even yeah, though it was like a slight angle, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I balanced really well. I haven't fallen. Maybe because I'm not doing something extreme, but <laughs> I'm doing. I got a lot of pads. I got so many helmets. She was pads, so well protected. <laughs> wrist pads, hand pads. My dad knew I was going to break a leg or something. <laughs> <laughs> break a leg? Not literally. Mm-hmm. But then I had to stop because of school and other reasons. Mm-hmm. You get so enthusiastic about all the stuff. Like, what is it about the culture and um, the whole, you know, about anime culture and manga culture mm-hmm. and really all the Japanese media culture that um, is interesting to you? Or I it think... seems to be a huge part of your life. Mm-hmm. It is a big part of my life. I have like, anime stickers on my water ball next to me. Mm-hmm. Um I think it's because during Disney, I used to grow up on that. And you had a lot of 2D animation. And I saw them phasing out of it into like 3D models, like Frozen. And you rarely see them do anything 2D anymore, Mm -hmm. except for like Spider-Verse. But we'll get into that later. Mm -hmm. Um, And so when I found out about anime, they do a lot of 2D animation still. It was really, really cool. I don't know what it is about the animation, but 2D animation is just so much more prettier to me than like realism. Mm Because if I want realism, I just... Open my eyes. <laughs> With anime, you can exaggerate things in ways that you can't really do. And I don't know. They have this way of transforming a world. Like Studio Ghibli, they have a lot of creativity in all of their animation. Uh-huh. There's so much detail that goes into it, and you see every tiny bit is hand-drawn. Oh, my gosh. mind blowing. <laughs> and the world that Miyazaki creates is just... When I watch it, I feel so relaxed because I know, you know you, there's mm-hmm. like the breeze and then the trees are like waving in the back. It's just mm-hmm. so beautiful. I love watching like Ponyo and Kiki's Delivery Service just for like their scenic scenes. Mm-hmm. Uh, my favorite animes too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you find that you like when you travel to different places or talk to people, it, 
when you can find that connection with them because they might be mm-hmm. geeking out about yeah, that kind of stuff as well. That's actually how it's, I met Han too. Yeah. Because me and Han, we were, I think leadership put us down in grade eight for like this like circle thing to get you to know each other in the same class. Uh-huh. Me and Han were sitting next to each other and then I noticed Han was drawing again. I was like, oh, she's drawing anime. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, that's really pretty. And then we started connecting more and more um, with like Studio Ghibli and other things types of media too uh-huh. and now we're still friends until grade 12 so yeah. if you want to meet new friends talk about anime <laughs> yeah because so many people are, are into it and mm-hmm. when you find somebody it's like hey <laughs> I, I know. know you through this thing <laughs> i know i can recognize <laughs> start talking things. about it yeah um the sad part though is that you can only really buy anime merch either a on amazon which some stuff is kind of mm. kind of <laughs> sketchy because they're either by stolen artists but oh yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you could buy it on a topic where they, the prices of these things. It's I, in demand. It's in demand. I remember buying a t-shirt there for like $22 once. And I was like, dang, that's really expensive. But I still bought a lot of anime t-shirts. Mm-hmm. And now they're like 30-ish. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it everything is, everything is much more expensive. It's now. so much more expensive. So I'm waiting until I get to go to Japan one day and buy it for myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My dad showed me a lot of like thrift stores in Japan because he's bored. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have like anime figures for like, what, like $20, $25 there. Oh my gosh. It is a fun place to go digging because mm-hmm. um, they have all sorts of, yeah. like, you can go really deep into a store. I know, like yeah. their stores are so cool to visit because I see like some of them have like stacks, like different floors for their thrift stores. Um, and then we just have tellies that has like one rack of toys. <laughs> I remember like, I, cause I've been to Japan mm-hmm. and I remember several department stores, but they're not like department stores here. These oh. are like several stories and every floor, it's like they sell everything, everything you could ever imagine. I know. Like watches, jewelry, food. Um, they, I remember one store, they had like an entire floor just for phone cases. Oh my gosh. And I was like, this is ridiculous. An entire floor. Look at the floor. selection. <laughs> yeah, an entire floor. Oh my gosh. Um, and then they had a whole floor just for like computer accessories, like gaming devices and chairs and just everything. So yeah, yeah you can really go deep down the rabbit hole if you are, you know, a browser mm-hmm. looking for stuff. The only closest thing I could get to Japan is like playing Persona 5. Mm -hmm. Because, like, with video games too, they like recreate things close as possible. So I get to explore Shibuya Station. Oh, yes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Where that famous crossing is. Yes. It's pretty. And I see a lot of photos and I want to go. I'm just saving up to go. I went to New York first, though, Uh because my favorite musical, Beetlejuice, was closing. Uh Um, They're on tour now, so they're not completely dead. Um, I did a whole project about Beetlejuice for theater Uh when we tried to do this one-day trip to New York. Um, I was a part of that. I know. We went together. It was... (laughs) I took like one of those red eye flights when you take it overnight and then you have to start the day in the morning. The jet lag was intense. (laughs) I never did anything like that before. So I had no idea how much. Did you sleep on the plane? Well, you kind of had to. But at the same time, the seats are so flat Uh and there's just no way I could sleep. My butt was just non-existent at the end of the flight. It hurt so much. It It was only like a six hour flight, but. The seats were so uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a short person, so I could fit into seats pretty well, but it was just really painful at the Mm -hmm. time. New York, however, it's not as glamorous as I thought it would be. Like, people say New York's kind of smelly and, like, dirty. (laughs) I didn't realize. Parts of it is. Parts of it is. Go to the good parts. I tried to. Go to to. the theaters. (laughs) Yeah, I mostly spend a lot of time in the theaters. I didn't see a rat, though, so it was not as dirty as people make it out to be. Uh, You have to be out pretty late (laughs) Mm. when people are gone and the garbage is out. Yeah. Then the rats come out. Mm -hmm. You could have gotten a pet. (laughs) I am. Like Ratatouille. Like Ratatouille. I dressed up as that for Halloween. Uh Mm Uh-huh. So New York was... Yeah, like how many shows do you go see? Maybe? I went to watch not too many since my mom had a lot of connections. She wanted to meet up with friends and all that. You know, the Asian mom hang out again. <laughs> um, 
And you so, were in New York before I was in New York, right? I think so. I think I was like a week earlier than right. you. Uh-huh. Um, we went to watch Wicked and Beetlejuice. Uh-huh. I think that's all we got to watch, though. Um, otherwise, we mostly did a lot of sightseeing, like went to one of the Space Needles, Empire. Um, and we also took one of the ferries, not a ferry too, um, the Lady Liberty. My dad wanted to, my dad found a way to take one of those, like, you know, those sea buses that we have in Vancouver. Uh-huh. Um, there's, there's something similar to that in New York and it's free. Uh-huh. Which is crazy. And it goes like 24-7. Sta- Staten Island Ferry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so my dad just took one of those and we just took a free ride and I, took some faraway photos. Yeah. It's cheaper. You take a ride to Staten Island, mm-hmm. which there's no real reason to go there. Yeah. <laughs> there's an outlet store, mm-hmm. outlet mall. Um, but it's a great route because you can take close-up photos of yeah. Lady Liberty. Um, and we also went to the... Metropolitan Art Museum, mm-hmm. I, the MOA, Huge. I think. It was intensely big. Yeah. Um, I had a map and it like folded and folded and folded. <laughs> and <laughs> How far does this go? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> unfolding. Um, it was really pretty. We had to like sprint through it though. My dad's like, we got to see this one. We got to see this one. How we were just hours? like running. Um, we only spent like four, four-ish and a half yeah, hours there. So did we. Mm-hmm. It wasn't that much. We didn't take any taxis around New York, so we had to walk. It was so dang hot in New York. <laughs> Something told – I don't know. I always thought New York was going to be cold because there's so many buildings covering it with shadows. Uh-huh. It is so hot. Uh-huh. I didn't pack enough shorts or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> Just had to put on a bunch of deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh... – yeah, it's a nice city. Mm-hmm. There's so much to do there. So much. I feel like I didn't do enough, but at the same time, when you look through at what I did, mm-hmm. I don't think I could fit anything else in there. No. Mm-hmm. And, and you don't want to rush around. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, you also went to Disney World recently, oh, right? Oh, yeah, I did. Um, the cool thing about it is that we got to go there early in the morning. Um, so there wasn't as many people there because my dad was like, we got to wake up at this time. We got to go. He was like airport dad again just to go to <laughs> Disney World. Um, so we had to wake up like two hours earlier, wait at the park gates until it opened. Um, we went to all four parks because we went to Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, Epcot. And there's one more. What am I missing? I can't remember. Uh, what Animal is it? Kingdom. Holly. Hollywood? I think it's Hollywood Studios. Yeah. Something similar, yeah. at least. Um, I think we first visited not in, um, Hollywood Studios first, I believe. Mm-hmm. I don't remember much being there. I think what we did was... What did we do? Okay, let me talk That's about... the I've, Tower of Terror is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tower of Terror. Uh, my parents, my brother, me, and my mom didn't want to go because... I always thought the Tower of Terror was scary. <laughs> I like. Is I it actually? I would not know. My sister went on it, and she said it was completely fine. She thought I could live through it. Mm. It don't. Your butt only raised like three seconds, and then you're back down. Mm. So it's not as terrifying as I thought it would be. But by the time we went back, the line was enormously long. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So I think I might just wait until I go back to Disneyland and do like the Guardians of the Galaxy ride yeah. instead. Because yeah. at least that one's more fun. Uh-huh. But speaking of the Guardians of Galaxies, at Epcot, they had this new ride where it's a long roller coaster and just spins. It, like, does a lot of loops around. But in the cart, it also spins you Uh in the dark. It's, like, it's a very smooth ride. So there's not many two dips and anything like that. But it's kind of like Space Mountain times five. (laughs) And it was so fun because I feel like before at Disneyland – Space Mountain was really fun. I went on it like three times. But like the Gardens of the Galaxy ride was so much better. Like if you're ever going to Disney World, uh-huh. you need to check out that ride first. So this is a Guardians of the Galaxy roller mm-hmm. coaster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, I watched Guardians of the Galaxy. I think it's Cosmic Rewind. It's mm-hmm. one of the newer rides. Mm-hmm. It got so popular that you have to take reservations. You can't really jump into the line. Right. Dang. And they close off reservations too. Really? But for luckily for me, I got to go on it twice. Awesome. It gave me a headache, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the cool thing about it, from what I heard, is that you can they rotate through different songs. So you could get a random song each time, mm-hmm. which 
she seems very Guardians of the Galaxy like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You went to Florida through Make a Wish Foundation. Yes, right? I did. The Make a Wish Foundation. I mean, it's amazing that they have that because, it is. like, after. And we'll talk about this, but mm-hmm. after what you went through, but not just you, your whole family mm-hmm. went through, it's so nice to have something like that where they're just like, you guys go and enjoy the time that you mm-hmm. didn't get to have together because um, of your the whole cancer situation. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to go back to like when when you found out that... Yeah, sure, of course. Sure. So... It was during summer we started to get like weird suspicions. I was taking summer school for English 11 because I wanted to get ahead. This is during during Mm -hmm. the pandemic then? Yes, just coming out of it, I think. Um, Where I was like, huh, there's this little funky, lumpy dumpy all around my neck. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I was like, it's probably just like a weird muscle. I won't think too much of it. And then I brought it up at the dinner table and my parents were like, huh? (laughs) And so they How were, big was this lump on your it neck? It wasn't that big. I could still move my neck really well. It didn't hurt at all. But um, it was noticeable. It was it wasn't it was noticeable when my mom and dad said, You have something there. But uh-huh. for like the longest time they never noticed. Right. <laughs> until I pointed it out. And so they instantly brought me to my family doctor, and my family doctor was like, You might want to visit the hospital <laughs> for this. I was like, Okay, that's mm-hmm. overreacting, but all right. And so they put, took me to the children's hospital. I waited for like two-ish hours before I got into the emergency room. Then they started doing a bunch of tests on me. They had like four, seven-ish doctors who all came through shifts to check on me. Until I was just like, it's been about like five hours. I was around like 12 p.m. I was texting all my friends about it. She was giving us constant updates. Yes, I gave... Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I put constant updates into our memes chat Uh because I was like, she was like, haha, like out of all of us, like I think me, Cassie, Han, like all, like Rebecca, we were all freaking out. We're like, Diane, like, why are you in the hospital? Like, we're so worried. And and, um, Diane's just like, oh, haha, I had like this cool bump on my neck. And like, I don't, I don't know. She called them Lumpty Dumpties the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I thought it would like, you know, ease into the situation if it was just like into the memes chat. So that was the first time you told them was yeah. when you were at the hospital? Yeah. I was like, so uh-huh. I'm at the hospital and they're like, huh? <laughs> this is before the diagnosis though. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were receiving constant updates and I just remember sitting there and being like, what is going on? Yeah. So were, were you worried right away, Christy, when you heard she was, was at the I was hospital little- or? I was a little concerned. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't know it would be cancer. I wouldn't have guessed it was cancer at first because I, I mean, it was during the summer, so I didn't mm-hmm. really notice the lump on your neck. But then again, yeah. that's when your hair was shorter, so it was kind of mm-hmm. like a little bit covered. But I was like, uh, she, she'll probably be fine. Maybe yeah. it's just like swelling or something. Yeah, I also thought it was like swelling or maybe like something I ate that like caused like an irritation or something. Mm-hmm. Um, I was literally about to start like Miss Hansen or Miss Shulk's. French homework. When they came in, they're like, "Wait, you had homework over the summer? <laughs> this was near the start of the school this year. Was, I was oh, okay. at the school right at the start. I was at school for three days of grade eleven until uh-huh. my parents were like we gotta go. <laughs> we gotta and go. so I was about to like start. Okay, Jay, and then they started coming in. I was like, okay, and they all had like monotone, somber faces, and I was like, maybe they're tired. It's twelve p.m. Yeah. And then they were like. Yeah, you have lymphoma, and I was like, "What's that?" And they were like, "It's a type of cancer." I was like, "Oh, okay." Mm-hmm. And so I instantly Googled, and when they said not to Google anything, I instantly Googled. <laughs> of course, <laughs> you should. yeah. Doctor, um, like says. Hodgkin's lymphoma, and they were like, "The chances of surviving was like seventy to like 90. I was like, "Okay, it should be fine. It should mm-hmm. be fine." I had like stage two, mm-hmm. um, so it wasn't super bad. Um, eventually I got hot, I got transferred into a room three different times. Uh-huh. Um, hospital food wise, not as bad as you think. <laughs> were you rating, you were rating the menu items. Yeah. <laughs> like they had like really good, they had like a wide variety of food. They had like from salmon to like chicken strips to like different types of pasta. I was there at the hospital for like two weeks, but it definitely felt longer than that. Uh-huh. Um, because I had to do several different tests. I had to do x-rays. I had to do, like, 
these big, bigger <laughs> x-rays. Um, I had so many blood tests and like two surgeries all within like two weeks. And during surgeries, you're not allowed to eat anything. So I had to like starve for the whole day until. Yeah. Right. And the thing about me is that I'm an older kid. So they usually put older kids at the very back of the schedule to make room for like the younger kids who can't wait as long, mm -hmm. which makes sense. I wasn't mad about that at all. Um, they made up most of my time happy as they could. They gave me like crochet stuff for free, <laughs> which is why I did it for my capstone since mm -hmm. I have it. Mm -hmm. um, they also, one of my closer to the end, they even gave me a, a PS5 at the time. Wow. <laughs> I know, which made the journey a little bit easier. Me and Rebecca tried to play Minecraft within the hospital room, and it was pretty fun. It's amazing how you focus on the positive stuff. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, if we go back to where you, mm -hmm. the doctors came in and told you you had cancer, like, yeah. what were your initial thoughts? Uh, I started to cry a little, of course. Uh -huh. um, I was thinking, like, what's going to happen? Should I start thinking about death? And then once I saw I was like, I have, like, a 90% chance of living. It's fine. <laughs> I'm just like, eh, crisis averted. And, and then they started doing a lot of tests, and then things went in roller coasters, so for sure. Yeah. Well, you know that some people would look at the 10% and go, uh. I mean, <laughs> I I say I'm a lucky girl. Uh -huh. You are. I am a lucky girl. So I knew I wasn't going to do super poorly, but the medication really made me feel like it, though. Yeah. Um, and what did they, what were the treatments? So they gave me this. There's this surgery that inserts this little machine called a port. It's like no bigger than like a water bottle lid. Mm -hmm. They would insert it underneath your skin. So when they put in needles, they could go straight into the machine and just start regulating through your whole body. Okay. It's like she yeah. has a charging port. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Before that, they gave me something a little bit more temporary. I forgot what it was called, but it was, it was like permanent IV tubes on your skin. Yeah. Um, it needed to be cycled out two weeks. Um, it needed to be like fl um, flushed out every single night. So my mom had to play nurse. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, that went on for m most of my treatment. My treatment lasted about six months, which doesn't sound long, but you had to go to chemotherapy every two weeks. Mm -hmm. So we had to make the drive over to all the way to Children's Hospital. Sometimes we had to go back because something was wrong with my IV tubes. Mm -hmm. um, they gave me like this little sock to keep it um, safe. So when I roll over at night, it doesn't get too tangled up or broken. But like sometimes it would get clogged. So we mm -hmm. had to go all the way back and they had to fix it somehow. Um, so, so it was all chemo. Yeah, it was yeah. mostly all chemo. At first, they gave me a lot of like painkiller drugs. They did a lot of tests with different types of medication. But they already had a lot of research on Hodgkin's lymphoma. They don't know what caused it. They still don't know what causes it, but they have a few treatments that, you know, gets it to 90% survival rate. Mm -hmm. mm. At the time, I mostly focused on the positives because thinking about the bad things ain't going to help anything. It's true, but still, it's it's unbelievable that you went through that time and you, you're still talking about the positive stuff about the food and how you <laughs> rated it and things like that. And I know I know you were talking to your friends about your hair and mm -hmm. wanting to try out a new hairstyle yes. when you lost your hair. Okay. And that's just, I can't, like, I, I don't know how I would react to that kind of a mm -hmm. news, but that's the best way you could take it. <laughs> yeah. I kind of always hated my bob hair. Uh -huh. I had it ever since basically birth. <laughs> you were born with a bum. I was born with a door haircut. Yeah. So when I had to shave off my head, my head felt so free. I could look down the stairs and I'm not blind. You had like, uh -huh. she had such a great like revelation where she was like, guys, my head's fuzzy. Like, I, I, like my hair dries within like two minutes. It's great. No, it was taking a bath with like super like a buzz cut shave. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> like, I didn't even need a towel dry. It just does it in like five minutes. Uh -huh. And it felt like velvet. Anyways, um, otherwise, I mostly slept through. So, with chemotherapy, you have it every two weeks. It runs through your body for an entire week. So, I felt like death during that time. All I could really mm -hmm. do was just wake up for medication and then sleep on the couch again. Cause, like, it doesn't hurt. It's just like, a huge immense constant nausea. Oh. So you couldn't feel whether you were 
either A, starving, or B, too full already, which is a weird balance. Like, it felt like you were going to throw up, if not starve. Mm -hmm. It was a weird, weird balance to be in, like, constantly. So the um, the painkillers didn't really do much because I felt a lot of it still. So they switched me out with a few medications, things like that. But most of the time, I just had to, like, sleep through the day if I wanted to, like, survive. <laughs> but, like, after day seven was over, you'll be surprised as I felt normal again, which is pretty weird because, like, one day would feel like an entire week to me when I would, when I was, like, flushed out of all of the chemotherapy at the time. But, yeah, <laughs> during that time, the seven weeks, the seven days I had with no chemo felt so long. So the six months stretched out really longer than I thought. I'm almost like a year from no ca- from no cancer too. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. The day I was off chemotherapy was March 28th. Mm, so we're coming up. pretty it's close. Coming up. You should come take or something. I know. Um, but yeah. So you get to the end of your, your mm-hmm. treatments. Like mm-hmm. how did you know when things were going well for you? And- Honestly, they didn't really cut chemotherapy. It was just like boom, 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 boom until the sixth month where they're like, okay, um, things are starting to look better for you. Like your blood cell counts are looking good. You're eating decently better. Um, and so they were just like telling me about the process of getting off treatment. They still kept me on like pain medications for a few more months, but I didn't really need to take it. Um, there's a lot of things that I had to like slowly gain back. Um, but taking the medication just made me feel a bit more sick than it did help me. Mm-hmm. So once I finally cycled out of the medication, I felt pretty good again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the whole time you were undergoing your treatments and, you know, not just at the hospital, but even after coming home, I guess, it was, a, was it a worry for you that, I mean, we were, technically we're still in a pandemic, mm-hmm. sort of, even though we're yeah. kind of more relaxed now so because everybody's vaccinated. But. nearing... Okay, I think around, like, the fourth month, I was, like, really dying to see my friends again, come back to school, have, like, some kind of a normal life. Mm-hmm. So I took earth sciences online just so I could still have my graduation requirements still good. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, I took history with Mr. Turpin and textiles to keep me company. So I would have to miss an entire week for, like, two months. But we caught you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we recorded the history lectures. Mm-hmm. So I would be, like, sleeping on the couch passing away and then I'll be like so we're gonna be talking about the <laughs> Russian revolution <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you recorded Turpin's lectures yes we did oh, wow. mm-hmm. I could hear all of the gossip from Christian Cassie in their desk because like yeah, the, the phone sat like right mm-hmm. at our desk uh-huh. mm-hmm. so you could hear like all the stuff we say under our breath I don't <laughs> yeah. know for better or for worse <laughs> has Turpin heard these tapes um I think Han sent each one to him, but I don't think he ever opens it. That's yeah, That's it was really mainly funny. for other, also other people who were missing class. Mm-hmm. It's a good yeah. idea. I feel like more people should do it. Yeah. Yeah. And then because I did, I was able to take my time to go slow. I could stop the recording, write down more notes, look at slides again, and then start again. Because sometimes Turpin t- talks too much about rants. <laughs> and then sometimes he talks too quickly about other things. So I have to like <laughs> slow it down. What did that mean? Slow down. Not Turpin. sometimes, all the time. <laughs> you press the slow mo button. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Turpin. Anyways, <laughs> this is a Turpin diss track. <laughs> Let's hope not. So, anyways, it honestly really helped me. Uh-huh. And then I ended up getting like top of the class, which wow. is crazy. Yeah. Like I had to skip every single week and they still made it. And they even got like a textiles award. Yeah. yeah. It's posted at the front if you want to see yeah, it. I've seen it. It's mm-hmm. good. I was so happy to get that indigo gift card. <laughs> <laughs> I think in that photo, in that photo, do you have your wig still? Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah. Okay. When I wanted to go back into school, my they gave me a session to check up with this wig hairstylist. Uh-huh. It was made with real hair. So I had to come oh. back five weeks later to actually get it. Yeah. Um, and when I tried it on, I was like, wow, this is pretty good. <laughs> it looks so looks, accurate. It looks so accurate. It's no like one, identical. No one knew a thing. No so, one knew. No one like knew. When you, you, you met a wig stylist? Yeah. So it was, how does that all work? Okay. Like, Do you get to pick 
what color of hair? It was or? a small kind of place. They said no photos, but my mom took photos. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's typical Asian mom. Yes. Uh-huh. Um, so we sat down. It was like, it kind of looks like any hair cutters. They would have this like hair cutting desk for you. And they would sit, in, sit you down on the chair and be like, okay, so what does your hair normally look like? And I would show them old photos. It was like, okay, I see, I see. They said, oh, it's pretty thick. And they would like measure the height of your head. So they're trying to match your mm-hmm. original They try to hair. match it as close as possible. Okay. They shot, um, they had but like could a, you tell them, no, I want... I want you know, lime green. I want white hair. <laughs> I tried, <laughs> or, but my mom was with me. She said, no, 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 no. <laughs> she just got like... Some crazy mohawk. I know. I was like asking them, so how can I dye my hair? And I was like <laughs> staring at me. Dead it's like, don't you dare. Don't you dare. <laughs> That's funny. I know. I want a mullet. I, oh my gosh. I, with my long hair, sometimes I have to, sometimes when I'm lazy to cut it, I get like a little bit of a mullet. <laughs> um, but yeah. Did, did, did they have a selection there for you to look they at? They had like a few example wigs. Some uh-huh. of them were like really long. <laughs> and then I sent photos to my friends, like long hair dying. It did not look good on me. <laughs> it looked unnatural. It looked Although, unnatural. I remember before like your treatment and everything, I was kind of trying to convince you to grow out your hair because you're like, I, I don't really like the bob. And I'd be like, come on, grow it out. And then you would come to school and you would like cut it again. And I was like, no. It's don't. not. It was under the force of my mom. <laughs> Otherwise, um, sometimes the wigs, they honestly didn't feel that bad. Wearing a wig underneath a bald head felt, I don't know. It didn't feel Not like a itchy hat. Or it didn't feel like a hat and it didn't feel itchy. It was just a different type <laughs> of it was, hat. <laughs> it was a different type of texture in a way. What? Do th- there's must be a layer between the hair for yeah. the wig and mm-hmm. your head. It did not feel itchy at all. Sometimes it was just like constraining. Like a, did you sort of- sweat? I mean, not often. The thing about it is, like, it's really, like, flowy in a way. It's breathable. It's breathable. So Um, it's like a fabric that's capping your head? Oh, isn't Mm -hmm. there the stuff that it looks like your skin below your hair, but it's not Yeah, they have this, like, layer of fabric that's, like, close to tan color. So it looks like you have a scalp still, (laughs) which is (laughs) kind of scary, but kind of It's kind of unnerving. Uh Yeah. Um, And so you could style it any way you want. They said I could dye it, but... You know, <laughs> so they've constructed this so you can actually style your yeah. The your thing, hair. so I only had to wash it like after a week of wearing it, and you just put it in like a bowl, <laughs> stir it up, with stir the it up like a little witch. So you just put in, like conditioner, shampoo, moisturizer, oh, conditioner, shampoo. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just, just like put it into a bowl because it is real hair. Mm-hmm, it is real hair. It doesn't oh. have any oils that natural hair would have because right. it's dead already. Right. I think it's all donated hair too, which is really cool. Yeah. yeah if I, I had I long enough some, hair, yeah. I would keep donating, but I really like my short hair now. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, wait. Didn't uh, didn't you have like a – you have a wig stand. Yes, I have a wig stand. What's her my name? My dad um, – the hairstylist said I didn't need a wig stand. Um, she had this other customer who just kept it in like her drawers, but I wanted a wig stand. I wanted to have that cool stuff. So my dad got one at the dollar store and I named it Jillian <laughs> and I put uh-huh. weird, go- I put humongous googly eyes on it uh-huh. <laughs> and lashes. I put on eyelashes on it. She looks beautiful. <laughs> she looks beautiful. I would style it sometimes, but I don't wear it much anymore. I wore uh-huh. it for like crazy hair day once and no one knew a thing still. <laughs> no one knew. <laughs> Like, I had short hair the yesterday, and now all of a sudden, they're like, wow, she just grew it all out in one night. It looks so natural. I tried, you should. You could be the perfect saleswoman. You'd be like, I tried this new hair serum, and it works so well. Mm-hmm. When, you, when you put it on your head, do you have to, like, attach it somehow? Oh, no, not really. So in the back, there's, like, little rubber band clips. So you can, like, you know, like a baseball cap, how they have, like, Velcro, so you can make yeah. it tighter. Yeah. You have something similar where it's, like, Rubber band and clips at the end, so it clips into loops. If you wanted to make it tighter, looser, um, honestly, it did really well. I could shake my head around and no one knew. <laughs> um, me and Christy tried to test it one day, just seeing how much <laughs> and how violently it would fly off. It stuck on really well. Oh, good, because yeah. that'd be strange if it mm-hmm. flew off on you, <laughs> you know, on um, the wind or something. Since my hair basically grew back, I had like, I think I had three haircuts now. Woo! Yeah. Um, I mostly just use it for my Kiki cosplay <laughs> for Fan Expo. Great. But, Comes yeah. in handy. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I remember. I remember when you came back for your courses. I was so happy to see you because mm-hmm. you know we were all really worried about you. Mm-hmm. And then um, I guess at some point you were told that you're cancer free, and you. I remember you sending me an email saying that I'm finally cancer free. Yeah. I'm a cancer killer. I'm a cancer killer. <laughs> That's her name nickname in our group chat right now yes. is cancer killer. You are. I am. How did that feel when you were told? It. it felt really good. And how were you told? Um, they were just well, they were leading up to it a lot of days yeah. before. Yeah. So I wasn't really like super surprised. I was just like, yes, and we went out for victory ramen. Oh. For dinner. Oh, that's the best <laughs> celebration, mm-hmm. ramen, mm-hmm. for sure. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, when we went out for dinner, we were like talking about all the things we we're going to do because we were planning our Disney trip already uh-huh. for Make-A-Wish. Mm-hmm. The thing with Disney trip is that they also gave me a Universal Pass mm-hmm. and Disneyland and also like a ticket anywhere in Florida. So you could go to SeaWorld, Legoland, things like that. Cool. Um, I was only supposed to stay for five days. And then come back home for Christmas because I went in December during the winter break. Mm -hmm. Because Vancouver was overloaded with a bunch of snow, I ended up staying Christmas in Florida. (laughs) That's cool. I know. So I ate a dinner at Disney Springs Uh and did a lot more shopping there. Um, The cool thing about Make-A-Wish, they all paid for the extension too, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, They were allowed – since I had these passes, I got like – ultimate fast pass at any park in Disneyland. Mm-hmm. I just had to show it. Mm, there you go. And they let VIP. me through. Because I saved like hundreds of dollars by not buying a fast pass. Because like with the Genie Plus now, you can only have up to like four rides. And so you have to pay $30 again I know, per I'm going person. going there in the spring break. Mm-hmm. <laughs> going to Disneyland. And then I didn't, honestly, I wasn't super excited to Universal Studios. Because mm-hmm. we went to the first Harry park. Potter. I know Harry Potter, <laughs> but like... They had something similar in California. I yes. already been there. Yeah. There's not much to do, I thought. So when I went around, I mostly spent most of my time at the Her- Hogwarts land. But anywhere else in the park was kind of boring. It's mostly, uh, unlike Disney, it's mostly screens, right? You, yeah, it was 3D, all you put screens. put on the 3D glasses. There was, yeah. Okay. Um, I think there's one part that said Adventure Island and another park that's like Universal itself. Yeah. Um, it was all screen rides except for Mummy. I was talking to all the cast members there and they're like, yeah, you should definitely check out the Mummy ride. And then I would be on to another screen ride. Mm-hmm. The only reason they said Mummy was because it was the only ride ride. Everything mm-hmm. else was 3D <laughs> augmented. Right. And I felt so bad because I went around to all of these different people. They were, everyone looked kind of let down. Like there was this kid who wanted to the Despicable Me. He was like, I waited two hours for this. <laughs> <laughs> no. I know a it's kid movie said screen. that. Yeah. I know. That's so sad. It's so sad. Yeah. And they even took away the Shrek part of the Universal Studios at the time. No. So there's nothing for me to look at anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the good thing about Universal is that when I showed them my fast pass, they had like barcodes. They had like my name, the date of birth. They had mm-hmm. like a lot of information. And they allowed me to go like the front of the line. Mm-hmm. Skipping fast lane, skipping regular lane. <laughs> Front of Which, the line, backstage access. If you paid normally, it's super expensive to get. Oh, that you can't fast even do that normally. Thing. Yeah, you can only get fast pass unless you're like press. If not, right, you make don't a go wish. to the front of the line, but the, so there's a press. special line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ridiculously expensive ridiculously. to get that. Ridiculously, yeah. um, and so they let me go to the very front of the line. And when I went to, there's this new ride called like Hogwarts Fantastical Creatures or something. Uh-huh. It's about Hog, um, Harry. Uh, not Harry, Hagrid, uh-huh. showing you around all of the Fantastic Beasts there. Mm-hmm. You get to go to the Forbidden Forest. Cool. And it was such an amazing ride. The lineup was like over two hours long. And they didn't even have a fast pass lane. You had to stand in general admission lane. And it was so worth it. I got to go to the very front of the line once again. <laughs> um, the ba- um, They were adding in more carts because they saw how big of a demand there was. So they mm-hmm. had to stop the ride, add in a new a few more motorcycles to allow for everyone to make it go smoother. So I went in the baby room. They were showing off Harry Potter movies. I think it was like (laughs) the fourth one. I was, a lot of babies were not there. So I got to watch it peacefully. Uh Without Um, the babies. I know. The ride is so good because I'm not like a thrill seeker. So I can't do those huge rides at like SeaWorld. I like the themed rides that go pretty fast. This one, see, um, the Gardens of the Galaxy ride um, and Space Mountain were like the fastest rides I went on. Um, 
So when I went on to Hagrid's ride, it went perfectly fast for me. They did twists and turns. They would stop for like a little break, show you a cool <laughs> animatronic. <laughs> wow, that's really nice. There was like some smoke. This ride had everything. It like... It went through this dark cave, and it would stop you there, and you would be like, whoa, what's this? It was like a dark, slow ride at first, and it would keep going until you stop. And then Hagrid's like, look up, and you would look up. They drop you into no. the dark, oh. and then they would zoom you backwards. So you're going on a dark ride. You're looking up. You're going down, and you're going backwards. And then they had this part where the track broke, you know, kind of like the Yeti ride uh-huh. at Animal Kingdom. Yeah. And they would just pull you to the top of the broken ride and then zoom you backwards again. It was terrifyingly amazing. That's cool. I know. That's cool. I would have gone in it twice as well, but I was terrified already and I had enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Like like what I said before, mm-hmm. like that they have something like make a wish for, you know, just to make up for lost time. I know. Because you lost a lot of time. Yeah. And you spent a lot of time just, you know, like you said, undergoing treatments that yep. make made you want to just puke all mm-hmm. the time. So I, I'm so glad for you that you got to experience that I with know. your family. Mm-hmm. They, it definitely made up for it, even though, okay, the treatment was terrible and Disneyland was amazing, but walking through Disneyland made it feel like cancer again because I was so <laughs> tired. Because <laughs> my dad wanted to make up for everything since I only had like a week there. Yeah. So we would get home around one and we had to wake up again at six to start the day again. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so our feet were just dead tired at the end of it. So we would. And is that like, leave, even before the treatments, is mm-hmm. that what you felt? Basically, in your body? like if you're going to Disneyland and you're walking every <laughs> single just day, exhausted every day. Exhausted. Yeah. And it was hot there too at Disneyland. Yeah. I mean, it was December. And. Surprisingly, it also got really cold there. Like, I packed a bunch of shorts thinking it was going to be another New York trip. (laughs) And it was surprisingly cold. I had to wear my winter jacket. You're like, I don't have any pants now. (laughs) It was just the reverse. The cool thing is that I didn't stay at one of the resorts at Disneyland. I stayed at this place for specifically cancerous kids Uh um, for their Make-A-Wish. It was called Give Kids the World. Uh It was very childlike. Uh-huh. Which is to say it's good and also kind of bad since I kind of, it was like overly childlike. What What is the makeup of the kids who go to make a wish? Is it like you, mm-hmm. you were already told that you're cancer free mm-hmm. and you got to enjoy. I think most of them are either still in treatment, if not already done with it, like me. Yeah. Because I could see a lot of people had make a wish shirts on. They had like th- where they were from. There's like some different people from different parts of America, other people from the East Coast of Canada. Oh. I came from, of course, British Columbia. So you're like, wow, is it cold up there? And like, yep, it's <laughs> cold up there. Uh-huh. Um, but so yeah. you, because you hung around in that mm-hmm. area, you got to meet a lot of people who, were, yeah. who kind of went through the same thing mm-hmm. you did. I think I didn't spend much time there, mostly because we were, again, waking up at six just to go to Disney again. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people were doing the same thing. Yeah. So we didn't get to meet a lot of people. We met everyone there who works there are volunteers, mm-hmm. which is really, really cool. They had like carousel rides there. They had like a free ice cream parlor. They had free food, like an entire cafeteria full of free food. Again, amazing food selection as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and they also gave us like villa rooms too, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Though we didn't get to spend much time in the villa rooms. <laughs> that's that's neat that they have all that yeah. set up for you. They had like. Yeah. They even had horses there, which is insane. Did you ride a horse? I wanted to, but again, I didn't. It was a huge place too. Uh And it's not open to the public. You have to be admitted there. You have to be admitted to the hospital to get there, Mm -hmm. which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's quite a... (laughs) Your last couple years have been pretty... Pretty intense. Like a roller coaster. (laughs) Yes. Like a thrill ride. Yes, just like Disney. (laughs) What, what do you think you'll learn from that whole experience? Honestly, if I got through it then, I have literally no reason to worry. But at the same time, I have a lot of stress again since I missed out so much. I had to do like a bunch of catch-up work now yeah. that I came back because I could only do three courses last year. Right. So I had to do, a, that's why I'm taking like six different clubs at the same <laughs> yeah. time. Uh-huh. Um, I'm taking up leadership again. I'm doing a lot of things. And then I don't feel like 
career life. Maybe I missed something during grade 11 career life. But I'm trying to catch up with a lot of work for universities because they'd be like, show off your grade 11 and 12 courses. And I only have three things for grade 11. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if the universities will like understand Mm-hmm. I hope they will, but it's going to look a little suspicious at first, for sure. Uh-huh. And then also... But you're cancer killer, so you can just tell them that. Yes, I'm you're just like, I killed cancer. Certified <laughs> cancer killer, let me in. <laughs> let me in. Because really, like, what's one year, like, if you, like, it, 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 I mean, if um, you don't get in next year, it's not the end of the world, right? Yeah. Like, after what you've been through. Mm-hmm. Um, It would be nice to take a gap year, of course. mm -hmm. Um, But I think I had enough time being by myself. Yeah. (laughs) That's Um, true. Yeah. Did you feel like while you were away for so long that you just wanted the routine again? Yeah, literally. The only times I were able to go out since – because we had to like wear a mask all the time, be careful because my um, my immune system system wasn't – to the best standard, and I could be very susceptible to different illnesses. Like, yeah. if I got a fever, I'd get to the hospital right back away. Right. Because, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, the only times I got to go out was, like, doing mall trips were limited, but they were the only things I could do. <laughs> if not, I saw my friends, like, a few times after school, only, like, once or twice, though. Yeah, or uh, me and Cassie went to your doorstep a few yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They dropped me off bread and carrots. Smoothie maker. <laughs> Smoothie maker. Because you were, like, talking about, like, I don't have appetite. And we're like, Diane, you need to get vitamins. You need to yeah, eat. Just you need drink, to Yeah, just drink smoothies. And so they That's gave so me nice. a... <laughs> I know. You're dropping off care packages. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> so it's a good thing you have, like, a family that will take care of you. Exactly. And, and friends that, mm-hmm. you know kind of helped you along the way mm-hmm. i'm sure you had a lot of on the your memes chat or whatever oh, yeah. we had that to make a, a separate channel after that <laughs> yeah we named it we you we you with an ambulance emoji <laughs> oh i see yeah interesting not much better <laughs> not much better but because mm-hmm. yeah that, that must have been that must have been really helpful for your yeah. recovery mm-hmm. so now that i recovered almost a year i still have to go to the hospital every three months for an right. x-ray blood test and then general checkup just to make sure it doesn't yeah, come back. For the next three years. And then after that, a, a few more checkups, but like decreases as it goes. So like medically, what would you um, advise people? Um, sleep well, <laughs> drink water. <laughs> that's, um, that's hard to ask of for students, day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Part of the thing is too, like when she was first diagnosed, it's like, yeah. We were like, oh my gosh, Diane, are you okay? Like your health, like like we'll give you anything you need, like care packages, like what, what do you need? And she was just like, oh, I'm falling behind in math right now. No, I'm so stressed about that. That was my very first worry when they were like, yeah, you have to stay at the hospital for two weeks. And I was like, well, what about math? Yeah. <laughs> we're like, Diane, it doesn't matter about math. I was math. like, I was texting a few students who I knew for those three days. Can you send me the math <laughs> homework? Oh, wow. And then I realized, yeah, that's not going to happen. Wow. Mm-hmm. So then two weeks turned into six months and then I'm back again. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes sometimes you need something to take your mind off your current situation, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe that could be what was on yeah. your mind. During that time to take things off my mind, I would text my friends, play video games. I tried to play Genshin Impact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I dropped out of it recently. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I started knitting a lot. I knit a lot of things. I'm mostly scarves because I didn't want to put my stress through a pattern. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I gave a few scarves to some of my relatives. So you didn't want to put your stress? No, because, because with following a pattern, you have to count. <laughs> and I realized... Oh. <laughs> You're like, it reminds me of math. <laughs> it reminds me of math. So when you were knitting a scarf, you don't need no, a pattern? Not really. I kind of just... It's a, it's a long... <laughs> it's very repetitive. Oh, you just repeat yeah. the same thing so over and just, over again. Yeah. And now I'm learning yeah. how to crochet for my cardigan for capstone. Mm-hmm. Car- crocheting is a lot easier than I would think for knitting. I think knitting is a lot more repetitive, but crocheting, you get to do a lot more, which is so cool. I learned so many easier stitches. My hands cramp a lot, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot more fun cause since I can make stuffies now, I can make cardigans. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. so cool. So you picked up some skills along the way. Mm-hmm. So yeah. cancer wasn't all that bad. Come on, Diane. <laughs> I mean, Diane has a very special skill of looking on know. the brighter yes. side. I do not know 
you're like a different sort of human being. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always was, look on the bright side. It was seriously. <laughs> I look for all the silver linings. I'm happy with my new short hair. Seriously, when you were in the hospital and your friends were talking to us, my friends about were what, way more panicked than me. I know. <laughs> we were all mm-hmm. panicked about you, and um, yeah, they were telling us about you know how oh you were talking about your hair and mm-hmm. all the rating your food, and I was like, what is going <laughs> on? <laughs> I mean, but that's just you. Mm-hmm. So, if I were to live through those six months thinking about how bad I'm feeling, I don't know if I'll make it, mm-hmm. like, mentally wise. I think I'll always still be sad today Yeah, just thinking about it. So now that I'm, like, recovered, I'm doing pretty well thinking about how bad it was before. And, like, I got through it then. I could get through anything now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cancer killer. Cancer killer. Sent many a hospital selfie to the group chat. Yes. Like she would be just, like, hospital core. <laughs> and I'll show off my bandages. Yeah. She, she would like take a selfie. She's like about to have my biopsy. And I'm like, Tyan, why are you? <laughs> yeah. That's mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. So what are you um, looking forward to into the future? <laughs> Honestly. Because now it's uh, like you said, thinking about college, university, mm-hmm. I'm pr- You've got a driver's license already. Yeah, I took my yeah. grad photo today for the car. I yeah. was on top of Diane's oh my car. <laughs> uh, okay, during my driver's license test, my parents got me a professional driver um, to teach me it. The professional, a professional I'm a professional driver. <laughs> <laughs> she said Driving that she's school. been teaching people for like 10 years, and I was the only person who got an extension from ICBC. A ICBC. professional driving instructor. Yes, driving instructor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and I was the only person who got an extension because they never give extensions to anyone. What, do you, what do you mean extension? Oh, for the driver's test because my mom booked of time. it. My mom booked it for a year after I can get it, like the day of that I can take it again. Right. And when they were like, oh, she has cancer. Okay, yeah, we should probably <laughs> give her an extension. <laughs> um, so I had to learn how to drive with all in within two months because it didn't give me much time. <laughs> so I had to learn... Two months, and I still somehow passed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> First try, too. But yeah. you, you've played Mario Kart before. So, I played Mario you know, Kart. You're I'm halfway that much there. different. Mm-hmm. Halfway there. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Just don't drive on the grass. No. Right. <laughs> or throw bananas. Yes. Yeah. Learn how to drift well. <laughs> <laughs> drift well. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but what are you looking forward to in terms looking- of uh, schooling beyond high school? Okay. That is a very good question. It's a loaded question. <laughs> a- I've asked so many grade 12s and it's still, I don't know, it's so much pressure. I I don't understand how to expect kids at 18. I say kids <laughs> because we're 18. Why am I supposed to plan my entire career for the next 60 years of my life? Yeah. Um. So as of now, I'm definitely going to go into post-secondary. I'm probably going to go into Douglas for two years. Just something general like business administration. Mm -hmm. But I definitely want to work for like a nonprofit, like make a wish as well. Mm -hmm. I've been looking to a few kinds of places like that here. Maybe I'll work at a food shelter. Maybe I'll work at like another kind of um, make a wish place. Maybe I'll work off internationally for one of those things. But yeah, still looking into it. Um, You've got some ideas. Yeah, a few ideas. I just know I want to work for one of those kind of organizations. Yeah. Because, like, with industries and companies today, they are getting too rich and too powerful, and I don't mm-hmm. really want to do any of that. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be corrupted or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Diane's going to go from cancer killer to corporation killer. <laughs> 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 but, yeah. Which is a type of cancer, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Then you're thinking about giving back. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's... During the place I went to, the Give Kids the World, they said that they had people from Canada come to Florida, Florida, Florida. Just, to volu- just to volunteer, which is really cool. Like they took an entire trip just to volunteer. So maybe mm-hmm. I'll do that one day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. It, it's nice talking to you and, and kind of hearing the stories because I, mm-hmm. like I kind of knew from the outside what was going on. We emailed a couple times while, in, yeah. while you're in the hospital just to check up. But it's, um, it's good to hear that you're cancer free. I was so happy for you when you, mm-hmm. got, when you sent me that email saying mm-hmm. that you're a cancer killer. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah she did. Yeah, she is. I finished. Um, and um, 
it's awesome that you're thinking of giving back in the future, mm-hmm. which is uh, which is a terrific way to go. That's the only thing I'm certain about about the future. <laughs> you know what? Um, you never know. You never know. I, I know I was, you know, obviously in your position as well. And I just kind of went with what I was interested in mm-hmm. and had no clue what I was going to do with it. <laughs> and here I am back in a school <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for 20 years at the school. So it's, mm-hmm. um, it's been amazing talking to you yeah, and learning you so about much. everything about you. And I wish I had your positivity. It <laughs> certainly, um, <laughs> certainly spreads when, uh, when people are around you. I know mm-hmm. that. So <laughs> Thank thanks so for much. thanks for coming in today. Yeah, and thanks for listening. Thank you, Christy, for yeah. co-hosting as yeah. well. First student Yay. co-host. First, First student, student co-host. co-host. <laughs> making making history here at Delview. <laughs> yeah, Diane's a really cool person. Um, Thank you. <laughs> highly recommend being her friend. Wow. Uh, you get to make fun of her height. <laughs> she's, take, she's taking reservations now. Yeah. yeah use code Christy for 20% off membership. <laughs> 20% off. <laughs> Rental. <laughs> she has really great fashion sense. Mm. And she's probably going to become rich. So mm. you might want to get on her good side <laughs> sooner or later. <laughs> yeah. Mm. All, right. All right. That's it. I'm turning this off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, okay. guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.